Brandon Turner, welcome to Podcasting Made Simple. Dude, thank you for having me. This has been a long time coming since last time we chatted. I'm, uh, I'm pumped about it. Yeah, super excited. And, and I thanked you last time that we did uh, recording together. I thank you again for giving up a little bit of time of the Maui waves to spend time with <laughs> us. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Well, let's get into it. So opening question here, and this is actually just me being curious because I've before I do any interview, I always do a lot of kind of research. I listen to interviews. I reread books, right? We're both readers. I love that. And I'm wondering, is this the first time you've been on a podcast that's about podcasting? Mm. It may be. I'm trying to think if there's any other show I've been on about podcasting. Dang, yeah, I don't think I don't think I have. I mean, yeah, and which is nice because I mean I'm so used to talking about how to build wealth through real estate and buy rental properties and flip houses and and build, you know, like become a millionaire. So, you know, people can follow pretty much every other thing that I do for that. But right. Pod, yeah, yeah podcasting is actually what made everything else possible. I, I love it. We're going to get to really dive into all that. Real quick, though, for anyone who's already disappointed and ready to like leave <laughs> because you're like, we're not talking about real estate and creating millions of dollars of wealth through it, right? Like, just go Google Beardy Brandon and you will find yeah, everything find this guy does. We'll probably talk about it a little bit, but I really want to focus on podcasting because of the thing you just said, right? In many ways, it was the vehicle that got things spinning yeah. for you. Uh, th so, again, you've achieved a lot in real estate, but I think, and I, I should say I know, a lot of what we're going to talk about today will use similar things that you learned through real estate. That yeah. was just the vehicle that you chose. That was the lane you decided to go in, but it works for podcasting as a guest or as a host as well. So I'm excited 100%. to explore some of like what makes you so success su successful at what you do and how that applies to, uh, to podcasting. So uh, first thing I want to just mention is like, I want to hone in on like your craft as a podcaster for anyone who doesn't know. So first off, you've been a guest on hundreds of shows, mostly about real estate, of course, right? Some productivity and stuff like that, which we'll probably have a little bit of overlap here. But also you're the host for like a decade, I believe, of the Bigger Pockets Real Estate Investing Podcast. Yep. Which for anyone who doesn't know, that that is was one of the largest shows in the world, like a top ten or something like that, right? It was it, yeah, it was, it was huge. Big. Uh, so for a decade doing that, uh, and then you're still actively guessing on podcasts. And now you have another show, your own show, which is a better life with Brandon Turner. And I'll, I'll ask you some things about that. Did I miss anything involving like your podcasting journey? No, that sounds about right. Cool. So I, I want to first ask just because this is probably the question everyone's thinking like, wow, a decade with a podcast that was a top 10 of all podcasts, right? I'm just curious, what made you decide to, to leave that podcast? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, like in my heart, like in my soul, right? So at the end of the day, Bigger Pockets is an amazing company. I love them. They're great people. They're doing great things. They're changing the world. Uh, it wasn't mine. It's owned by private equity. Um, they're a great private equity company. I love them. They're great. It's still not mine. And so there's a, there's a soul mismatch when you have an entrepreneur trying to fit into the body of an employee. Uh, and so, you know, putting things through committee and, and having to have 15 layers of people to decide on things it's just not my style. Uh, and so I would rather have a smaller podcast but own 100% of it than to have one of the world's biggest podcasts and own very, 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 very little of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Did, did you have any – I mean, after 10 years, did you have any struggle with making that decision? We're mm. just like, I'm sick of this. I'm out of here. Like, what, what was that actual <laughs> emotional – what was yeah, that dude, like for you? That's intense, man. Uh, I mean, every year for – I mean, because, again, it's not like I've, I wasn't an entrepreneur early on. It took me nine years or – it was really nine years of podcasting plus a year uh, – yeah, a year break uh, is what I did. And, I mean, every year from year one, I was like, oh, I could do this on my own because I just – I. It, it was like a puzzle piece that didn't quite fit. And I don't regret it. It got me to where I am, and I would not have been – and we can talk about this, but I would not have done it on my own. In fact, while my heart is entrepreneur, my actions were not. And that's actually a really vital distinction that people need to make is your heart might say I'm an entrepreneur, but an entrepreneur has to be self-motivated and get up and do the work when no one's telling them to do the work. And I did not have that skill set for a, for a long, long time. I still, to a degree, don't have that skill set. I've just learned to hack it in 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 in, uh, in ways that get me through it. Like it's like I have a a missing arm, so I'd have to find different ways to open a jar. It's like that. It's like I had to figure out how to get around my lack of um, self motivation. Uh, so the the emotion that I had, it, the question that I had is, am I Justin Tip uh, Justin Timberlake, or am I Lance Bass? Let me explain that. When uh, NSYNC broke up. And Justin Timberlake left in sync. And I shouldn't say Lance Bass. He actually did pretty well for himself. Who's the guy in N sync that nobody knows his name? I'm sure there's like probably three of them, right? I know Justin, yeah, I know Lance. I know other names. What are the other names, right? So the question was when I left, 
bigger pockets. Could I could I make it as a solo act, so to speak? Or am I going to go down as just an obscure something and disappear off the planet? And that was the, the debate I had. And uh, I'm not sure I know yet what the answer is. But I also believe that being Justin Timberlake is not about luck. Justin could have gone down into nothing had he sat on the couch and had he just watched TV every day and been like, well, I got millions of dollars now. What do I need to work? Uh, he went out there and did movies and he, he made more albums and he wrote some really good music. And so he didn't rest on his laurels. He just kept climbing. And so I've taken that approach is whether or not I'm Justin Timberlake in talent, I have no idea. I don't think so uh, in terms of like podcasting. However, in work ethic, I have tried to make up for it. And in even more than work ethic, in vision, in saying this is where I'm headed, I try to make up for it. Hmm. I mean, we're going to dive into both those things uh, in, a, in a couple minutes here. Before we get into that, though, I do want to just clarify something because you, you yeah. immediately went to calling it like, did I have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? And you, you didn't for a while, as you said, right? Yeah. And, and I think immediately people that are watching and listening to this, they're saying, well, my podcast isn't about being an entrepreneur or my, my podcast guesting isn't about that. But here's the thing. A podcast, like any form of cre content creation, it, yep. it's a business. You yep. are an entrepreneur. And I, I just had that conversation with somebody today. It was like in a public forum, actually. And, I, and they're like, listen, my podcast is about like, I, I think it was something to do with like keeping the earth green, right? And like, it's not a business. I'm not trying to make money. I'm like, but you have to run it that way yes. or you're just not going to make it. So I think that the fact that you brought that up and had that realization of would I be able to do this is extremely important on either side of the mic. Yeah, it's 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 everything when you say like what does it mean to run a business then? It's like it's having goals, it's having standards, it's having a culture, it's having consistency, it have, it's having persistence, it's having um yeah, it's having a level of like accountability to get things done. Like those are that's what a business does. And if you do it right, it grows. And so the same way uh and it's successful. Not 100%, but it sure is a thousand times more likely to succeed than just throwing crap out there like yeah i've known podcasters too i mean i mean you probably know way more than me but who are like i'm gonna start a podcast and then they like do an episode and, and maybe maybe do a second episode if they're lucky and then never continue it again because they're not treating it like a business they're just treating it like oh just let's just do a podcast and then uh it's like the thomas edison quote of like um work show you know people often was it people often mistake work uh because it shows up, or what is it, luck every day because it shows up in overalls and gets to work. It's like, right. uh, yeah, you just, if you treat it like a business, it's going to be more successful, almost guaranteed. Yeah, I love that, man. Uh, and I want to get into some of those tactics today. Before we do that, I have one more question about your podcasting journey that I'm actually very curious about. So you, it turns out you are the Justin Timberlake of podcasting, by the way, Brandon. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you for thinking so. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you decided to start your own show, you pivoted away from real estate, which I was – personally following your journey really shocked yeah. when i saw the title a better life i assumed it was gonna be a better life through real estate yeah but you're very your episode zero as you called it like right like the trailer episode yeah. you start off saying this is not about real estate it might yeah. get covered wealth might get covered but that's not what it's about and i was actually very shocked by that it, can you uh, this probably gets a little bit into your why for yeah. podcasting anyway and I, I think that's to me that's 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 number point zero right yep. the most important thing is having a strong why why did you decide to do this? Like, what was the reason, uh, like, of such yeah. a, an aggressive pivot? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I don't know if it was the right choice. And I'll, I'll expand on that in just a second. We may be backtracking a little bit. And um, that's just part of, again, treating it like a business as you sometimes pivot. But let me explain. The question at the beginning that I, I went back and forth on is, I can be the biggest fish in a very small pond or immediately small pond, which is real estate investing. Like, I already am the, like, this whatever, the most popular podcaster in real estate investing. I already have like five of the top 10 books in Amazon on real estate investing. I'm already the one of the biggest fishes in real estate investing. And I can stay there and I can continue to be the big fish in real estate investing. But my ego and my desire to grow says that that is a small pond compared to a much bigger pond of just human development or personal development, however you want to call that, uh, just success or whatever. Uh, and so I decided I would rather shoot for a bigger potential, but to have a harder climb to get there. So like competing in the world of Lewis Howes and Stephen Bartlett and Chris Williamson, competing in that space is a way more challenging game. But I mean, Alex Hermosi, right? I mean, look at like these guys, like just massive, massive, massive reach and audiences. 
Uh, and so I decided I wanted to play in that space because I'm good enough to. I'm not saying I'm better than them in any way, but I have 10 years of experience to learn how to play in that space. So I'm going to be way better off than most people just starting there with zero, right? So that was the choice I made. Now, that said, this is probably more important. Why podcast? Let's go to a really fundamental question. Why do we even start podcasts? There has to be a reason for it of some kind. Everybody's got a reason. So when I look at my reason today of why a podcast, let's it's to grow my personal brand. Well, why do I need to grow my personal brand? Well, specifically, I've got two. I've actually got five, six companies right now. But let's just go to the two biggest ones. Who's counting though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who's counting? Whatever. Six, five, six. And it changes actually every month. Uh, but the two biggest companies I have at Open Door Capital. We have about 10,000 units of rental properties. Uh, we've raised over $300 million. That company, if I do it right over the next decade, will make me a billionaire. That's insane to say out loud, but it's true. If I do it the way that our financials have projected, in 15 years from now or less, I'll be a billionaire. So, okay, so what is, why do I need a podcast? Because in order to get to that level, I have to raise hundreds of millions of dollars. How do I raise hundreds of millions of dollars? I do it from podcasting by getting millions of people to know, like, and trust me. And podcasting is the greatest path towards the no like trust factor scaling that's ever been seen on this earth. It is by far the best thing and more than TV, more than YouTube, more than uh, any of that is podcasting. Um, there's something magical about people listening to you every week for an hour or more, half hour, hour, whatever, week after week after week that builds the no like trust factor. All right. So I need to podcast to grow my wealth through Open Door Capital. I also have this other company called the Better Life Tribe. It's, the, it's a tribe, it's an accountability mastermind where 100% of profits go to fight human trafficking. We currently have right around 1,000 members paying right around $300 a month. We're gonna have a new higher tier pretty soon with some performance coaching. That goal is to give away $50 million every year to fight human trafficking. And I don't think it'll be that hard. 10,000 people at 500 bucks a month will get us $50 million a year to give away. So what do I need for that to grow? I need millions of people to know, like, and trust me. So let me sum all this together and why I might be pivoting. Because when I play in the Lewis Howes, Chris Williamson, Stephen Bartlett, that space of just general personal development, the Joe Rogan space of just whatever I want to talk about, I might be able to get more people to listen, but I'm not necessarily getting the right people to listen and to convert. So I don't podcast for fame, I podcast for conversion. And I, I wanna, I'm gonna say that again because that's super important. I don't podcast for fame, for numbers. I podcast for conversion. They have to suit my needs. I have a friend who has 5 million followers on YouTube uh, in the finance space. He also has one of the biggest podcasts in the world. He couldn't raise a million dollars. At the same time, in the same time period, I raised $120 million. He couldn't raise a million for a real estate deal and I, I raised 120. Why? Because the size of the audience doesn't matter. It's who the audience is. So that's why I may be shifting. I'm going to shift a little heavier back into real estate because at the end of the day, I need people to give me money for Open Door Capital to partner with me, and I need people to join the Better Life Tribe. And the market says real estate investors are the ones doing that. The real estate investors are the ones giving me money. Real estate investors are the ones joining the tribe. As much as I wanted to go bigger, it's really hard to sell a product that says, I'm going to give you a better life with habits and goals. People are like, okay, well, I'm not going to pay for that. But if I said, I'm going to give you a tribe that's going to guarantee you get financial freedom in three years or less and you can quit your job, people will pay 500 bucks a month for that all day long, right? So I now podcast for conversion, and that's why I'm going to be not necessarily going away from the personal development, but I'm going to add on uh, more real estate content. Uh, Brandon, not just to pat you on the back, but kudos to you first off, because a proper why as a podcast guest or host is always something that's bigger than yourself. It has to go beyond you. So I'm really, I, I, I wrote Thanks, down man. to bring up the point that the Better Life Tribe gives away 100% of the profit. Um, love what you're doing there. And that right there, that makes the why bigger than yourself. It's not so that Brandon can be like, I have a billion dollars in my bank account one day, right? Like that's not the idea. It's what's yeah. the impact I'm going to leave long term. So again, kudos to you. That's amazing to see. You said something just so important. I podcast, I, sorry, I don't podcast for fame. I podcast for conversion. And what that really is talking about is the avatar. Yes. Who is it that you serve? Which it, anyone who's here heard me talk, I always go back to that ideal listener slash avatar. And if you're a guest or host, you've got to have somebody. I love the fact that you're out trying new things because that is like the definition of an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. But then figuring out and honing it back to who is it that I really serve that's really going to help complete this mission that's bigger than both of us. I, I love that you've gone in there and, and really 
you're honing that in, man. I, I respect that so much. Thanks, man. At the end of the day, yeah. I mean, if it, I mean, if it helps you give away $50 million a year to fight human trafficking or more, and if it helps me become a billionaire through real estate, and, and I have a mortgage company that's launching that could be a billion-dollar business. I have a few other you know, side hustles, um, like a high-ticket high, high ticket real estate mastermind. But, like, if it helps all those grow, I would, I would sing on a podcast. I would do a podcast about movies. I would do a podcast about, like, I'm not going to do one about something I don't like or care about, but I would pivot to almost anything if it accomplishes my goal and my goals of conversion, which means sales, which means success. So I will, I will do what needs to. There's a, a very good book called The Lean Startup uh, from Eric Reese or Rice, R-I-E-S or R-E-I-S. Anyway, Eric uh, wrote this book called The Lean Startup, and it basically says you do not know what, the, what business is going to work. Uh, the market decides that. So you might have a theory that says I'm going to podcast about movies and then you start doing it and you realize every time you do talk about movies, it does okay. But anytime you venture into the world of musicians who are in movies, all of a sudden that episode kills it. Okay, well, then the market has determined that musicians in movies is more popular than movies. So you can pivot if you want to grow and get into that. Uh, and you get to still be true to yourself and your interests and all that. But uh, being open to the market, I think, is super important uh, when it comes to wanting to scale. Unless you're happy being small and just having it a passion project, that's cool too. Oh, man. So in the name of not podcasting for fame, but instead conversion, we are now going to hear a live performance yes. by Brandon Turner. <laughs> Here uh, we did go. you bring your guitar? Where, where's uh, that at? Actually, I, I'm into rap now, so I'm going to be rapping. Oh, uh, great. Yeah. Well, go ahead and hit the beat or whatever it is. Like, Start it up and let, let's go. Um, <laughs> oh, man, man. My beat machine's broken. Sorry. Uh, just... uh, you know, I'm sorry, everybody. Mm. We'll just keep the interview going then. Yeah. So, all, right, uh, all right. I do apologize. Uh, <laughs> I, I Oh, man, I'm not going to edit any of this out, just like last Good. time. Um, Good, I hope not. Yeah, yeah. so we're just going to keep this thing moving along here. I want to get into the point that we've kind of hinted at since the start, which is talking about uh, some of the, the systems, the processes, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures, right? But right before that, I want to talk about something that I hear you say a lot in regards to self-discipline. First off, aside from having a really strong why and person that you're serving, the number one contributing factor to someone's success in podcasting is self-discipline. Uh, here's the thing, Brandon, I hear you say all the time, I don't, I have, don't have a lot of self-discipline. I struggle no. with it. You talk about it all the time. And you already hinted at these productivity haps. But first off, how have you made it as a podcaster if you really struggle with it, which is the number one contributor yeah. to failure slash success? Can you talk about that? We'll kind of get into some of the practicalities of it. Sure. I'll, I'll explain in a story. So a few years ago, uh, I wanted to get into racquetball. This is probably eight years ago now. I really like the idea of racquetball. And so I could get up and I could get up early before work. Uh, and I would go grab my ball and my racket, and I'd go down to the YMCA, which is 30 minutes away, and I would just go whack the ball around maybe. Maybe I'd find a partner there, somebody who's standing there and wants to play, but probably not. And you know how many times I did that? Zero times. Zero times, right? But then I met this guy, Robert. We became good friends. He went to my church, and he's like, hey, I love racquetball. You want to play sometime? I'm like, yes, I do. So the next morning at 5.30 a.m., He's outside my house, and he's like, let's go. And I'm like, okay. So I wake up, and I, I go out, and I play racquetball. And for the next year, we played four times a week because he would show up at my house at 5.30 a.m., and we'd go play racquetball. I never missed a dime because I had somebody there. I will disappoint myself and my own ambitions and my own dreams, and I will let TikTok or Instagram or YouTube overtake it, and I will lie in bed, and I will do nothing unless I have someone there at my house, who shows up and says, let's go play racquetball. So how does that apply to podcasting? It, I have people who I am obligated to show up, and, and I will let myself down, but I will not let other people down. And most people are the same way. As long as there's somebody else involved, now I'm going to show up and do it. I mean, there's a million studies that back this up. Like, if you want to go to the gym, just get a gym buddy. If you want to podcast, like somehow I had to get other people obligated. So I hired, actually, when I launched the new podcast, I hired a full-time podcast person. Could I afford it? I mean, not from the podcast. The podcast makes no money and it donates all the profits away anyway. Uh, in fact, every bit of ad revenue, this is kind of a fun hack we did. Uh, every, not just profit, but 100% of the ad revenue from every show go toward a charity of the guests choosing. And I ask that live on the call every single week. I say, or on, on the video, I, I say, so what breaks your heart? Where, do you, where should we send all the money from this episode? And it's not a lot. It's like a thousand bucks an episode right now. But anyway. Uh, it's a cool moment. It's a great talking point in the episode. For sure. And it makes the guests go like, one, incentivize because we charge, you know, we, we pay um, ads uh, based on CPM. So they can go out and get their podcast to get downloaded more. And I now can give more money away to their charity. So uh, anyway, um, 
does a, does a business make money? No. But I knew that if I didn't invest in a full-time person that showed up every single week and got the thing going and made it work, I just would not do it. So the answer is, the number one answer to my lack of self-discipline and self-motivation is to obligate myself to other people so that I will not let them down like I let myself down. Man, that, that accountability, right? That, that person huge. in your life, like, that's, that's absolutely huge. I know, like you said, there are very few people and the, the studies are conclusive. There are very few people that are just okay with letting others down, right? Yep. Uh, and I guess that's kind of the accountability for a podcast guest. Uh, if you're gonna be on somebody's show, you know they're waiting for you, right? Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, chances yeah. are you're probably not gonna be like, eh, I don't really feel like it. No, there's there's somebody waiting in a yep. green room, right, uh, for you to show up. And a- as the host, I always say this: like, yes, your listeners can be your accountability, but because you don't have ongoing interaction with them, usually there's got to be more to that. And, and so I, I don't necessarily recommend hiring someone as Brandon did. Thankfully, you're in a place where that made sense, right? Yes. But in general, there are small communities that you can be yep. part of that people can help, like just help keep you accountable. Uh, Brandon, what are some best practices you find for being held accountable, especially from a content creation perspective? Because you, you blogged for years, you've written tons of books, right? Like yeah. someone has held you accountable strictly for, hey, are you creating this content, right? Do you have some best practices or ideas around that? Yeah, man. I mean, a huge piece of it just comes down to identifying what are the actions you want to do. Uh, so whether it's, and, and on a weekly basis, I like to do it on a weekly basis. So I literally have this journal, I call it the better life book. We give it to all of our tribe members and it's like got this, uh, it's every week has a habit tracker page. And so you write down, first of all, your three goals that you're trying to work toward. So every week I rewrite my three goals. Then I've got these habits that I r- write down and habits could be anything from record one podcast per week to go on a date with my wife twice to read my Bible every single morning and to, uh, did I have dinner with the kids? Uh, did I go to the gym? And you write down the number of times you want to do it. So I'm going to go to the gym three times, two dates with the wife, you know, dinner at the family six times, whatever those things are, podcast two, one, whatever the number is. Now at least I have identified what it is I want to do, what I have defined as a better life, as an ideal life, is this is what I know I need to do in order to accomplish the goals and vision that I set for my life. So A, just by tracking it will 10X your chance of getting things done. Like just by tracking it. Did I do it? Did I not do it? It takes 30 seconds every morning. Did I do it? Did I not do it? Did I go on a date with my wife yesterday? No. Did I eat dinner with the family? Yes. And I just, at the end of the week, now I have a score. A perfect week is 42. I got a 25. Ooh, that's not so good. That's like a D. Maybe next week I can do better than that. And and so tracking is a huge hack to getting uh, yourself motivated to actually get that stuff done and then adding accountability. So every single week I meet with three other dudes and we, we meet on a call and we, we, we say these like five or six questions. We say my three goals that I'm working for are ABC. So we write down, we say what those are out loud. Just so it's again, a reminder every week, this is what I'm working towards last week. When we were on this call, I committed to what we make some commitment every week. I'll come back to that. So last week I committed to blank. Did I do it or did I not do it? The habits that I struggled with, because I've got my habits written down, the ones that I struggled with were what? The ones that I did great with were what? And then this week I commit to what? So it's those, those ones, that five or six questions that I, we say each person goes around the circle and we ask it every single week, those five things. And, uh, just that accountability. Now somebody knows whether or not I'm doing dates with my wife. Now somebody knows whether I'm doing the podcast. Uh, and that adds a huge, uh, that, that's a huge boom to my life. Just adding those two things, tracking and accountability. That's great, man. I'm glad you don't go the uh, Michael Scott route from the office where he says, I thrive with no accountability. That's um, funny. Because <laughs> it's not true, right? Uh, but something that I think is really important, I've heard you say on your own podcast, A Better Life, about accountability is you say to surround yourself with people who make the impossible seem like a two a Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's just beautifully said because it's like, man, you, who do you surround yourself with? You can't just get random people that maybe don't have the mindset of like, no, we're taking this thing somewhere, right? Yeah. You've got to have the right people. So if anyone's listening or watching this and wondering who, who is that accountability for me? Let me just find some other random podcast hosts or guests and just employ them, right? Let's, let's make it happen together. No, you want to see the ones that you're like, this is impossible, but they, they do this on a Tuesday, just yep. in the morning with their coffee, right? And yes. I think that making sure you have the right accountability is key because I imagine those three people aren't random three people in your life. They are people that you respect that you probably don't want to let down that are also, Correct. they're going places, right? 
Yeah, it, it's it's so important. Yeah, and they are they don't have to be perfect at it. They just got to be working at it, just like I'm working at it. And they have to be consistent. Now, when people don't show up to pod calls or accountability calls, they fall apart. Uh, which is why we have structure, very specific structure. Those questions are designed specifically uh, so that we don't get off track. Um, it's huge. I'm mean, going to give you another example of that. Like I've got some friends, that Jeff and Megan, they live about a block up north of me or up the hill of me uh, here in my neighborhood. They go to the gym five days a week, six days a week. They are the most in-shape couple I know. I mean, ridiculously in shape. I mean, Jeff's a former like Marine. Uh, and Megan has like this stupid six pack. Like they like, they like work. I mean, they do upside, like handstand pushups, like just in the gym. I don't want to be them. I don't want to be that in shape. I'm just, that's not who I am. But you know what? They make the impossible, like having a six pack or having like big muscles or doing an upside down push up, whatever. They make that look like a Tuesday morning. So I like actually going to the gym with them. In fact, just by the fact that they moved here, I don't know, six months ago, I go to the gym now like four times a week, not five, not six, but I go like three to four times a week now. And I'm, I've lost 15 pounds in the past, I don't know, whatever, like, yeah, four months, five months since doing that because, because they're there. They make the impossible of that look like a Tuesday morning. So in sometimes you have to pay to get in those rooms. Uh, like if you're like, Hey, I want to be a podcaster. How do I, if you're brand new at podcasting, you may not be able to get into a small accountability group with, you know, you or I, right? Like we're not probably going to do that unless somebody, you may have to pay for it. So then you pay for access to people who make the impossible look like a Tuesday morning. That's great, man. You know, I want to transition here cause I've got a bunch of little like quick hacks I want to sure. get through just because I think that you've after a decade or more of podcasting at this point on both sides of the mic, like you've got some stuff that you can share. Uh, this is actually going into some goal setting stuff that you do. And this is something I was just like randomly thinking about because I, I get on the calls with a lot of podcast guests and hosts. And one of the most common things I hear is, oh, my partner doesn't, doesn't really get it, right? Or my husband or my wife, yeah. my significant other, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, right? There's like, oh, they don't really like understand it. And I think the problem is something I've heard you bring up. And that's the importance of bringing the people that are most important to you into your goal setting. They maybe don't need to know like, I'm going to do 10 podcasts this month. They need yeah. to know why, going back to that, right? They need to know why you're doing it. Can you just talk about the importance of bringing these other people in? Because I think one of the reasons a lot of people uh, pod fade, as it's called in the biz, right, on either yeah. side of the mic, is because they can't get the buy-in from the person that's closest to them. Yeah. Let me give you a few thoughts on that, on how to get your partner, spouse, whatever, romantic interest, how to, how to get them on board. Uh, yeah, let me give you a few thoughts there. First of all, I think a lot of people use that more as an excuse to stop taking action. Everybody is, this is going to sound weird, everybody is looking for a reason to quit all the time. Like human nature is to look for a reason to quit. Uh, and so people will take almost any reason to quit. Like, oh, you know, I, I've been going to the gym for a long time, but, oh, you know, I just, I'm not feeling real good right now or I hurt my leg or whatever. Everyone's looking for a reason to quit podcasting, going to the gym, being a good husband, everything in life. Everyone's looking for a reason to quit. That sounds so weird, but like that's just human nature. So they use the my spouse isn't supporting me as an excuse. So first of all, if you're, if you're thinking, oh, my spouse isn't supporting me, so I'm going to quit. Understand that that's you just trying to find an excuse. You're self-sabotaging. Second, have you been a person of your word in other areas of your life with that romantic partner or with that person or not? Because chances are you have let them down in other ways that they no longer trust your uh, ambitions. What I mean by that is you were like, I'm going to do the Peloton. And then you paid three grand for a Peloton. And now the Peloton's sitting in your attic or sitting in your basement has been used in six months. What have you just taught yourself and your spouse? You've taught them that you're not reliable, that you are willing to spend thousands of dollars on something and then not live up to it. You get a gym membership. You don't show up. You buy this new fancy, whatever camera, and then you don't go take pictures with it. So there is a pattern of distrust that has been built up. And that's why they don't believe you that you're actually going to podcast when you say you're going to. And the third thing is this is what you alluded to is are you including them in conversations about your shared vision together? Are you setting goals as a couple together? And it goes back to the, like, I don't podcast for fame, I podcast for conversion for a reason. So when you sit down with your spouse, and you're like, I'm going to start a podcast. They're like, all right, yep, go ahead. You know, we'll, we'll, you'll be done with this next week. <laughs> right? Like we all know people in their life that are like that, right? right? That say yeah. they're going to do something. And we're like, yep, okay, that'll last a week. Some new like crappy vegan restaurant just came in down the street and me and my wife were just like, yep, that'll last two weeks. Like that, like you just tell like certain, certain people just whatever. All right. So, uh, if you don't, you don't need to necessarily say, Hey, I'm going to podcast. It's why, Hey honey, I want to get you out of your job. 
I believe the best way to do that is to start a business that is a, as a consultant. I think I can make six figures because this is what I would charge. If I can do that, I can get out, you out of your job so you can be a stay-at-home uh, you know, mom. Okay, to do that, I believe the best way to do that is to podcast consistently. That will give me the followers. I know that because Alex told me that or Pat Flynn told me that or Brandon Turner told me that. Here's what I want to do. How does that sound? Can we work on these goals together to get you what you want, not just because I'm excited about some new fad? So those are some thoughts on how to get your person on board, maybe. Man, that'll preach right there. That's good stuff, man. Uh, moving, moving along here, another way that people quit is through procrastination. Uh, specifically, a form of it that many people aren't really aware of is shiny objects. We're yeah. all trying to, I've heard you call it this before, success island. We're all trying yeah. to get there as fast as we can. So we build more and more bridges. And that's like, ooh, well, TikTok. Ooh, well, now there's, there was threads, right? And like, there's this and there's this. And so we kind of like, here's the core. And we say, hold on. What's this, right? Yep. And I, I believe that a lot of people, they may not, maybe it's not even conscious. I want to get your thoughts on this, but they seem to just jump so fast in those things when the proven model in front of them that is working, maybe not as fast as they'd like, but instead of feeding that machine, they keep on jumping into other ones. And I, I think that's another form of people trying to quit. They just are scared of maybe what this will turn into, but I don't know. Do you have thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, I just saw a post from Chris Williamson, um, who has, what is it, Modern Wisdom, I think it's called, or something like that podcast. Huge, 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 uh, at least a YouTube show slash, you know, whatever. I mean, one of the biggest podcasts in the world. He gets everybody. And he made a post on Instagram the other day that said something like, and I'm going to probably m get the number off a little bit, but it's extreme. He said it was three, it took him 300 episodes before he crossed a million followers on YouTube. That blew my mind because he's one of the best podcasters in the world in terms of like his content, his quality, and everything. It's just phenomenal. It took him 300 episodes to get a million people to follow him. Uh, it just shows like it takes so much more time than you think it's going to. Uh, but every single time you get a rep in, you are getting stronger. You are getting better. It's very much exponential growth. And so what happens is in almost anything is there's this exponential growth. I know people, a lot of them are listening. They can't see me. But imagine a line that's just basically straight. And then it slowly starts to curve up. And eventually hockey stick is what they call it. And boom, it, it shoots off. Uh, that's how most of the time when I see businesses grow, it looks like that. It's five to ten years of looking like you're making no progress and very, very little progress. And then someday you look back and you're like, whoa, shoot, look how far I've come. But what happens is people put in a few years and then they don't see the progress necessarily happening. And so then they go and start a new thing, but then they start back over at the bottom. They start back over with another thing that takes 10 years to get there. Uh, and so just remembering that it's about getting your reps in and then continually improving on those reps. Like just because you're doing the same thing over and over doesn't mean it's going to succeed. But doing the same thing over and over, pivoting as needed, leaning into what people want and are asking for, and then finding ways to constantly say, how do I do this better next week? And you do that for several years. Now you're going to have some uh, progress and you're going to start making a, a more successful business or podcast out of it. It reminds me of a Jerry, a Jerry Rice quote, today I'll do what others can't, so tomorrow I can have what they won't, right? Mm, yeah, that's good. Uh, maybe I messed it up a little bit, but something along those lines. But the reason I bring that's that good. up is because he's a perfect example. He probably heard that from his dad, someone was coaching him along the way. Before the dude was at least in college, I mean, he had 18 years of playing where nobody knew who he was, nor did anybody yep. care. Thankfully, in podcasting, the roadmap isn't that long, but that's somebody who was devoted to it, became one of the best NFL players of all time, yep. but there was 18 years in the dark of practice. And if he didn't do that 18 years, you better believe he would not have been one of the best players in the NFL of all time. And yeah, I think that yeah. just reinforced the point. We've got to stick with it. So, uh, yeah, Brandon, I know we're coming, coming to the end of our time, but you have something to add there. Go ahead. I well, can't, just that. Can't hold back. So I was going to say, I, I've been using a ton of gym metaphors, but I think they're always so applicable. It's like, it's like the person who goes to the gym for four months, right? And like, they're like, well, I don't really see any muscle change. I'm not really losing a lot of weight. So they stop. But as we all know, if you stuck with the gym for three years, maybe hired a personal trainer, maybe hired a dietitian if you needed to, or at least got some kind of diet plan, three years from now, you will look completely different than you did uh, in the beginning. But you never notice the change. You can't see it. And so majority of people, yeah, they pod fade. I like that phrase. That was a good one. Um, because they, it's like, oh, I went to the gym for three months and I didn't see any progress. Or even in podcasting, it's worse, right? I did three podcasts and I, don't, I didn't see any change. I went and lifted weights one time and I didn't see myself look like, you know, I don't know, whatever, the rock. So therefore, I'm quitting. Uh, stick with it, people. Stick with it. I love that, man. Hey, before we end our time together, I do want to ask you any final thoughts for podcast guests and hosts. But first, we're both 
we both are, we like to read, both of us. Mm. So I'm wondering, do you, I'm putting you on the spot here. Do you have any, yeah. just give us like maybe two quick book recommendations that you think would actually really help a podcast guest and podcast host. Of course, you're going to, for anyone listening, Brandon is currently just looking at looking behind me at my list of books. So well, I just, what do you got, man? What do you think? I just made a video called 22 books that'll guarantee to make you a millionaire. It's coming out on YouTube soon. Ooh, so I have nice. all the books in my office now. Um, Sweet. I'm going to tell you a couple of them. Uh, I'm going to give you a little list here. Number one, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. That's not The Art of War. The War of Art. You got that one? Yeah, every creative should read that one 10 times. Like re I read it annually at least. The War of Art uh, is phenomenal. Another great one that uh, you probably uh, – maybe you've read before, but it's called Four Disciplines of Execution by Chris McChesney. Have you read that one? I love, I've actually never love, heard of love, that love. Yeah, I love me, that so. book. Uh, it's, it's written by Chris McChesney and like Stephen Covey's – not Stephen Covey, but it's like his son maybe or brother. I don't know. It's a Covey. Uh, put out by the Covey Institute. It's called Four Disciplines of Execution. It is phenomenal. Um, that's a great one. Matthew Dix uh, wrote a book called Storyworthy. He's a competitive storyteller, uh, like The Moth or one of those kind of things. So he, it's all about competitive storytelling, which sounds like, why would I read that? But every person I've recommended that book to falls in love with it. Uh, and it just tells you, it shows you how to communicate better and how to tell better stories. Uh, so that one, for sure, I would add to the list. Uh, and then the last one I would do is 80-20 Sales and Marketing by Perry Marshall. It's a great book on just like uh, knowing how to outsource more, knowing how to get other people to do more things for you, knowing your dollar per hour, uh, and knowing how to grow uh, in the world of marketing. So there's a few for you. Very cool. Didn't let me down. There's three books, three of the four I need to check out. So you're there obviously you ahead of me this year in reading. I love <laughs> it. Uh, Brandon, any final thought for us today before I let you go? I, I would say this. Um, when I look at when I look at my success in podcasting over the past decade, uh, you know, when Bigger Pockets launched, we had a little, we had an email list of 100,000 people. So it's not like we launched with zero, right? We were starting ahead, but we also didn't have an email list with a 4 million like Bigger Pockets has today. So, um, so, so what I mean by that, and there are other companies who have launched, I mean, there are podcasters that happen constantly. Every week, there'd be a new podcast from somebody, and we'd be like threatened by it. And I'm gonna say threatened in a bad way, but just like, oh man, that's gonna be a huge show. That's gonna give us like some real competition. And they're gonna probably, because we are the biggest real estate show in the world. We're like, oh, that's a way bigger audience. And then 99% of the time, in fact, maybe 100% of the time, no real estate show ever beat Bigger Pockets consistently. Never, not, not ever. Now, why is that? Why did Bigger Pockets do so well? Why is the Better Life show that I'm doing, a Better Life with Brandon Turner, why is it growing faster than Bigger Pockets did at the beginning? What makes it like that? Let me give a few guesses, and I don't know for, for sure, but here's a few guesses. Number one, people need to be entertained. Don't forget that entertainment matters so much. And it's not necessarily ha-ha funny entertainment, but it's the way you talk, the way you communicate, the, the types of content you're bringing. Uh, entertainment is, like, key it's, in fact, I would argue that it's more important than actually the education you're providing or whatever it is you're doing is to somehow entertain people or they will not listen. Uh, so entertainment's huge. And number two is people – I once had somebody say this. They said they invested in Open Door Capital because of the way that I talked about my wife on the podcast. And that was such a, a huge point. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I'm saying people got to know me, the person, Brandon Turner, and that leads to conversions. So I'm not some like just person on a show that they can't relate with. It's like I talk about my kids. I talk about my family. I talk about my struggles, my insecurities. The number one thing people talk about more than anything else that I've ever talked about on podcasts is that I've mentioned it maybe twice ever that I am super insecure about the way that I talk. I cannot listen to a podcast episode of myself. I've never done it. Never listened to an episode of the Bigger Pockets podcast. Never listened to an episode of Better Life. Cannot do it. Cannot do it. And the fact that I say that Everyone's like, oh, I'm the same way. Oh, my gosh, I feel that way, too. I hate the way I sound. And all of a sudden, I've now built a connection point because I was real with someone. Now, I am deliberate about being real. So I call it like uh, intentional authenticity. I am intentional about being authentic. It's not fake authenticity, which is like I'm going to say that I don't like my voice to maybe like, you know, connect with people on a deeper level. No, it's real. I'm just not hiding it. I'm intentional about showing my flaws and showing my insecurities, and that builds a solid relationship. And then people get to know me, and they like me because of that. So my encouragement there is be entertaining and be authentic. Man, okay. So I, I think that's so great. And I, I, that last part, be entertaining, make it fun, right? Don't necessarily be the most funny person in the world. Uh, the other thing you just mentioned, I call that the three R's of content, real, raw, and relevant. Yeah. When you can get really good at those three things, you can just crush it in podcasting. 
Uh, anyway, Brenda, I've, same as our last conversation. I feel like I could talk to you forever. Like the oh, time no. has flown by. Uh, but man, thank you so, so much for spending this time with us today. It, it means so much to me. I learned a lot and I, I believe everyone else did as well. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate you.